Hey, everybody. We have the event of the year coming up this weekend at Christina's house. And we are so excited, but we want you to get the most out of this event. And so we just thought we would come and talk to you guys for a few minutes about this experience, what to expect, um, and then just how to get the most value out of it. Yeah. So it is a big deal when the CEO of your company comes to an event that you're hosting because there's a million things he could be doing. Um, he's the CEO of a half a billion dollar company and he lives in Arizona. So the fact that he's coming to middle Georgia to hang out with all of us, it is a big deal. I think that it is one that deserves sacrifice and respect and joy and excitement. And I'm here for it. I yeah. know that we've got people fly, or driving in nine or 10 hours. We've got people coming from multiple states. Um, and I think that just speaks to their commitment to be here and to um, just kind of soak up all that they can get from this event. Have you ever heard of a CEO from a $500 million company calling up somebody from the field saying, hi, can I fly across the country to come hang out with you and your, te your team? You no. ever heard of that? No. Me either. And my husband works for a Fortune 200 company, and his CEO has never been to our house. Yeah. He's never met the CEO, I don't believe, of his company. Yeah. So this event, although it sounds formal with the CEO coming to Christina's house, um, it sounds formal, but it's actually not going to be. It's going to be very low-key and informal and lots of fun, but also very informative. You will learn a lot from Jean while you're there, hopefully. And also you will learn from other people in the room while you're there. And you will just leave with your belief built and vision renewed and commitment renewed and relationships built and just knowing that you are a part of something so much bigger than you and feeling grateful for all of it because that's how we feel every single time we leave an event with our team. Yep. Okay. So it's a big deal that he's coming. We said that. Oh, this will also be great for your business because this is highly, highly marketable. Because it's it's very special and rare that a CEO would fly across the country to hang out with the field, right? We are the field. Um, and he is coming because he wants to hear from us and get to know us and hear how we work best and hear how, how maybe he can go back and support on the corporate end. And so when people, your audience on social media sees that, it's going to speak volumes to them. And they're going to be like, whoa, what is this that they're a part of? That's legit. The CEO mm -hmm. is at their house that he must really care. That's special. That's different. Okay, so And it's real. That's real. <clears throat> if a company has a CEO, that is a real company. So those of you that are like, I'm nervous to like tell people that I'm running a business or I own a business. This is something that you can be proud of. I hear it every time we take team members to the corporate office or Yesterday when I interviewed the vice president of research, it's like, oh my gosh, this is like really real. It's a big deal. Yeah, it's a big deal. Agree. All right. So it will be worth coming to. We know from experience, I've been doing this 10 years and I have gone to a lot of events and here's how it normally goes. The week of, the day before, the day of even, your brain or even your circumstances will give you a pile of reasons why you should just stay home and not go. It will appear much easier to just not go than it will for you to go. The list of reasons to not go may appear much lar larger than the list of reasons that you should go, but we're just telling you from experience that you should ignore the list of reasons why you should not go and lean into the uncomfortable because it will be worth it. You might be tired. Maybe you've been on vacation. Maybe you need a vacation from your vacation. Or maybe you've just been at home with the kids all summer and your brain's kind of frazzled here, there, whatever. Maybe there's just like a lot going on in your life. We get that. We understand. Because like I said, things are going to come up. But here's another thing to keep in mind. The reason why this happens a lot of times when you are about to be impacted in a big way where you're going to leave an experience and you're going to go and impact more people, of course, the enemy does not want you at something like that, right? So we generally do things in a Christ-centered way. The way we run our businesses, we want to honor the Lord through it. People are drawn to Christ oftentimes through interactions that we have with them in our business with our team our culture 
and the gospel will be spread through our interactions with each other. And so the more we are together and the more we grow together, the more people that are impacted. And you will be a part of that when you come to something like this. And so, of course, the enemy would want to prevent you from increasing your influence and your impact. So don't listen to the reasons of why you shouldn't go or don't listen to, you know, all the excuses that you could make about why not to show up, but instead choose to show up, even though you may feel like, I don't know what to say. It's going to be awkward. It's going to be uncomfortable. Or you might feel like I don't belong there, or you may feel like people are better than you or however you feel the stories we all tell ourselves. Um, just ignore that. Choose not to believe that and focus on the truth instead that you need to be there. Yeah. I mean, I, everything that you said is, it's so good. You may even have, it might not even be your reasons not to go. It could be your spouse's reasons or your kids' reasons or whatever. Come anyway. We have, we've prepared for this event with you in mind. Um, we tried to come up with everything that we could to make the experience as enjoyable as possible down to like a lifeguard to watch kids at the pool so that you can be inside with your spouse. If you bring your spouse or solo with the team, um, hearing with connecting with and just getting to know people. So we've tried to come up with everything that we could to ensure that whether you bring the whole crew, whether you come by your, it does not matter. Just show up. Decisions are made at events. People say leaders are born at events. That's not true. Decisions are made at events and leaders are born out of decisions. Mm -hmm. yes and um we do, like christina said we do have people driving eight plus hours to come and be at this event because they see the value in it because they've experienced it firsthand what something like this is going to do for them their mindset and indirectly to their business and they see the value in it and it's worth it to come mm -hmm. okay but if it's it's okay and it's normal if it feels uncomfortable just do it anyway yep all right well, let's talk about the party that we have several events happening. Okay. So the first one is everything that you need to know about the Saturday happenings that's open to every single person in freedom team and their family. So bring your whole fam. If you want to, that's optional, but Christina does have a pool. It will be at her house. There is a post pinned to the top of Plexus freedom team that Emily wrote up with all of the details that you need to know. There's also a sign-up sheet. If you're coming, please sign up to bring something and nothing elaborate, just something simple and quick and easy. But Case of waters, pack of cookies, doesn't matter. Yeah, side, you know, fruit tray, whatever. Look at the sign-up sheet, sign up to bring something. The Christina's address is on that graphic. Don't share it with weirdos. Don't share her, yeah. <laughs> okay, Um. Friday night. We are going to, if you are Ruby and up, you are invited to tacos and margaritas with the CEO at Christina's house. That will be from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. And it'll be kind of like a fireside chat, very informal, but we're just going to hang out with Gene and ask him all the questions that we have and learn whatever we can from him, catch his vision, build our belief, and just hang out with the CEO. So it'll be super fun. Um, and then Christina is hosting all of the rubies and up for a sleepover at her house. So our husbands and kids are going to be staying in hotel rooms until they'll be join us on Saturday. But Friday night, it's just the girls at Christina's. We have air mattresses in every single room and it's going to be super fun. So we're really looking forward to that. Um, air mattresses are provided. However, bring a pillow. If you want a pillow, bring a pillow. Don't yeah. forget your pillow. That's bring important. Pillow. Christina does not have 20 <laughs> pillows for every single person. Okay. <laughs> um, so that's Friday. And then Saturday morning, we're going to, at 9 a.m., we'll have coffee with Jean. And anybody's welcome to come to that. At 10 a.m., Jean is going to give a presentation. Husbands are welcome to stay and listen to that. Like Christina said, there will be a lifeguard we hired to watch all the kids swim in the pool so that the husbands could be present for that if they want to. Um, and we do ask that if you plan to come to that, please get there early so that you can get your kids and husband settled and just get your family taken care of and so that they can be swimming and settled by the time 10 o'clock comes around so that when Jean is up there speaking that there's not interruptions. Like we don't want people coming in and out while he's giving his presentation. We want to be respectful. We want to be attentive, 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 attentive. attentive. And but extra attentive. <laughs> we want to be attentive. 
we want to be engaged. We want to be interested in everything that he's having, that he's going to tell us. And we don't want to be distracted and we don't want other people to be distracted. So please, if you're coming to Jean's presentation, which we highly recommend that you do, get there 9.30, 9.45 so that you can grab coffee if you want to, or just get your family settled. Yeah, we'll have fans, chairs, tents, umbrellas, all kinds of stuff outside. Um, for those of you, if your husband's, you know, if you're, if your child's too young to be left with a lifeguard and you want to, your husband to stay outside and watch your child, that's fine. Like I said, there's, there's a big porch they can sit on if they want to be in the shade. There's shade provided below. It'll be fine. Yeah. Um, so at 10 a.m., Jean's going to speak for probably 30 minutes or so, and then we'll have an open Q&A for a little while until like 1130-ish. And then we'll transition, we'll get ready, we'll set up for lunch, and then we will have lunch at 12 and our pool party, um, which will end at 3 p.m. So everybody is welcome to stay until 3 p.m. Yeah. So lunch, we're providing uh, pulled pork, pulled chicken, mac and cheese, and then all the sides and finger foods and dishes, desserts y'all are bringing will be part of what's served at lunch. Yeah. So again, find that sign up sheet that is pinned to the top of Plexus Freedom Team and sign up to bring something. Um, also, if you or your family will be swimming, please bring towels for you and your family. All right, so let's go over real quick, just some quick expectations and how to get the most value out of this event. So first of all, when it comes to Gene and him being our honored guest at this event, um, I know that CEO sounds intimidating, but he's really just like a normal dude. And he's so fun and lighthearted and he loves to engage with people in, who are building a Plexus business. And he really, truly does desire to know how he can support, okay? But also you want to learn from him. So a couple of things. First of all, engage with him, not just each other, because we all know each other. We all love each other. And it's so easy to talk to each other and catch up. We There's going to be plenty of time for that. But also make sure that you are engaging with Gene. Show interest in Gene. Um, pay attention when he is speaking and be interested. So if he is speaking, please don't be talking. Please don't be distracting your neighbor. Please pay attention and just listen um, attentively and be interested in everything that he has to say because he is traveling all this way to come hang out with us. Um, come prepare. Hold on before oh, you say that. Okay. Pro tip. If you have a spouse that's a little skeptical or a spouse that's just not all in yet, my spouse started that way. This is a great opportunity for you to introduce your spouse to Gene and build his belief. Like, especially if your husband's in business of any kind or whatever. My husband loves Gene because they talk shop, they talk business. Um, they can speak the language that I don't understand. But if you've got a husband that you just feel like, man, I wish he would be all in with me. This is a fantastic opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yep. Agree. Um, come prepared with at least one, one question that you can ask him. And if you cannot think of a single question that you could ask the CEO of our company, here's one idea. Go to chat GPT and ask here's what I asked earlier. And it actually did give me some good questions that I could ask. I typed in, hi, my, the CEO of the company that I work for is coming to my house for dinner. Can you give me some good questions to ask him? And it gave me lots of good questions that I could ask him. And I, not some of them were dumb, obviously, because it is artificial intelligence, but some of them were actually really good questions. And so I screenshotted several of them and I intend to ask. So do the same thing, come prepared with at least one question that you can ask when the timing is appropriate for you to ask questions. All right, um, I think that's it as far as Gene. As far as the rest of the, the weekend, whether it's Friday night or Saturday, add value to each other in conversations. No, a lot of times people feel comfortable around their sidelines. And it's easy to let your guard down and just like uh, not guard your mouth as closely as you would as if somebody in your downline was sitting right there hearing everything that you're saying, okay? So always add value. Leaders add value in whatever situation that they are in. And what I would challenge you to ask yourself before you say anything to your sideline or your upline, who, whoever's around you, whether it's your downline, sideline, it doesn't matter is I want you to ask yourself, if my top runner in my business, my top business builder on my team was sitting here 
having a conversation with somebody else in this room, would I want them to hear the words that are about to come out of my mouth? Because you are talking to someone's downline. It might be your sideline, but it's someone else's downline. So always strive to add value. Whatever your words are going to be, choose them intentionally and wisely and put yourself in the shoes of that person's upline. Okay? Be the type of leader that other people trust by always adding value. Like I would trust Christina in a room with my whole team. Why? Because I know she's going to do whatever she can to add value. And what is what does it even mean to add value? Well, several things add value. It could be something as simple as giving somebody a compliment or making them smile. But it also could be something like raise their belief, raise their ambition, challenge them to, to go after whatever their goals and dreams are. And another way to add value is to just simply ask questions of that person and be interested in the person versus only talking about yourself or just trying to get attention for yourself. Be interested in other people. That adds value when you care about people. Yeah, I think what you, I mean, the focus can't just be on yourself. You should be there with the intention to learn from whoever you find yourself in a conversation with. And you can't learn anything if your mouth is the one moving. So ask questions. Yeah. All right. Do you want to cover that one? Listen, Linda, my household is not a negative household. We tend to be very, very, very lighthearted. So prepare yourselves, uh, but absolutely no negativity. If you want to be somebody that we can trust around our whole team, this is where it starts. Anything negative at all, griping about how hot it is, griping about having to wait for your lunch because it's crowded, griping about how crowded, how it, is. crowded it is, griping about having to park down the street and walk a mile, whatever. Anything that doesn't make someone better, happier, more successful, more driven, more confident, more comfortable, Anything that doesn't do that, it subtracts value. So absolutely no negativity. If you want to be a sideline that other sidelines want around, make sure that they know you're going to make their team better by simply being in your space. So uh, focus on the value. Uh, know, <laughs> this is funny that you have me covering this. Know how much work has gone into preparing this. I, I can say that. <laughs> I can say that. That's they, awkward. They, <laughs> I forgot about that line. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's not just you, but you know, so a lot, a lot of work has gone into preparing this event and making it special and making it valuable for you guys. And so just show gratitude, especially to Christina. She's hosting. It has been an undertaking. Okay. And Remember she talked about the enemy. <laughs> like, you think you want to go to an event and the enemy's going to give you all these reasons why that's not a good idea. Well, Offer to host an event for a hundred people and weird things like your ceiling will fall in. It's amazing. Amazing. So we've all worked really hard and it's taken an entire crew to think about all the different angles of what needs to be provided and how can we make the, the space special and what would, what would make someone uncomfortable and how do we avoid that? So it's taken everybody, all hands on deck. And so when we say things like, yeah, the day of you might wake up and think, man, I really would like to lay in the bed today instead of getting up and go to an event. Just know there have been many days like that lately where it would have been easier for us to lay in the bed. But instead, we were up shopping and creating and designing and planning for you with you in mind. So just keep that in mind. Yeah. And also, thank you to the other leaders that have shared the load with this because Planning and organizing and paying attention to every little detail, that's not either one of our strengths, <laughs> but it is Emily and Michelle and Terry and Jana and, you know, other leaders like them. And they have also put so much thought into this and time and intentionality to make it good. And so we're really excited. It's going to be really, really fun. Um, also, take initiative to make conversation mm -hmm. and do not wait for people to talk to you. Don't make yourself the victim by isolating yourself because of your insecurities. Because listen, if you feel insecure, just know that a lot of other people in the room do too. It's awkward at first for all of us, but leaders are initiators. And so don't wait for somebody to strike up a conversation with you. Come prepared with a question that you can ask. Remember we talked about adding value and how being interested in another person, that adds value. When you ask questions and you're interested in someone, that is 
you taking initiative. That is you including yourself versus making yourself a victim and expecting somebody to come and talk to you, okay? A lot of people that are going to be there won't know anybody or this might be their first event or whatever. So take initiative. Strike up a conversation. Go um, make friends. Yeah, pro tip. In, if your husband, if you're a leader on the team, leader being you have anybody coming to this event in, in addition to you and you're bringing your spouse, this is a great time for you to raise your spouse's leadership lid and let him know, hey, here's what I here's what I could really use your help with today. There's going to be husbands there who are reluctant to come. They were nervous to come, whatever. Would you mind just finding one or two throughout the day and like drawing them in? Do you mind like going and making a connection, introducing yourself, add value? Like I had to teach Brandon. Many of your husbands have benefited because of Anthony and Brandon and Jeremy and Shane and Stu. I mean, there's people just have benefited because of our husbands, but they had to be taught what the appropriate behavior was because they'd rather grow out with each other sometimes too, but they know at these events, hey, listen, we really need you to help add value to the spouses, build their belief, build their ambition, cast a vision for what this could be for their family, share how it's blessed us. So if you're bringing a spouse and they kind of feel like they don't really know what to do, here's a chance for you to teach them what to do. Give them some questions that they could ask other spouses. Um, so I would just challenge you to do that as well. Can you give them an example of a question to ask? If they get there Friday or Saturday and feel Ako Taco, what do they do? Ask like each other? Sure, ask anybody. Like what if you're saying, don't wait for somebody to start a conversation with you, go start a conversation. I was the one that was like, okay, how do you start a conversation? How do you start a conversation? I would say, hi, I'm Brittany. Tell me your plexus story. Okay. And if someone asks you that, what's an appropriate amount of time to spend sharing your place? Two right. minutes. Two minutes. There's and then two minute should... rule. Two minute rule in conversation means yeah. you never talk longer than two minutes before you bounce the conversation back to the other person. That's a great rule. I had to be taught that. So if you're just now learning that, that's okay. I had to learn it too. So two minutes and then you should pass the baton. They should be the one sharing next. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be good. You guys listen, the reason we were asked to speak on culture in front of our whole company a few weeks ago for a reason, because what we have created with you guys, what you guys have created, it's a big deal. And it's so different than other teams. And so this is just another opportunity for us to deepen that and to grow in friendship and relationship and trust and love for one another. And we really are so, so excited, very, very grateful to even have this opportunity. So we're excited. We hope that if you're planning to come, we will see you there. We hope that if you have not planned to come and you're watching this video and you're thinking, you know what? I really could work it out. Like there are people who are having to go farther, do more than I have to do. Let me just do it. Mm -hmm. We hope that you will change your mind. Shoot one of us a message. Let us know you're coming. Go sign up on the sheet. Show up. We'll be glad to welcome you there. Yeah. And our kids will be so excited to hang yes. out with your kids. Um, and we'll be excited to meet your husband if we haven't already. Um, and again, Thanks to Christina for being such a sport with this whole thing because this was sprung on her. <laughs> she didn't like volunteer for this actually. I was at the yeah. happiest place on earth. So it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, she was actually at Disney when I went in our chat and said, Hey, guess what? <laughs> know that team pool party we were gonna have with all our kids and husbands? Well, the CEO is gonna come join us. <laughs> that okay? Great. Yes, and, and then, she was such a sport. She and really then, was. and then the next time we were together, that's when I believe it was Terry and Emily's great idea to turn the pool party into a slumber party. Words I never thought I would be having at, <laughs> at forty, but here we are, and it's going to be really fun. It's it exciting. is. We are so excited. Cannot wait. It's going to be so fun. We'll see y'all there. Bye. Bye.